I think lemons would probably be one of my island basket ingredients, you know, to take with me because I think we all understand that acid balance in food is really, really important. I don't know how many times you guys have made a stew or a soup or something and it's just somehow not working for you and then you just do that little squeeze of lemon and then you try it and then it just all comes together. So it's a really, really important thing. And I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways we can use lemons perhaps that we don't know. Maybe some of you even have a lemon tree somewhere. I'm very good at stealing lemons from other people as I walk around Tambos Kloof. My husband calls me an urban forager. Elia, it's, it's a not nice stealing way of it. when you're doing research. Okay, so doing, doing research. You're professional. Yes, yes. But that, that sounds terrible. <laughs> a professional thief. No, professional researcher. Oh, a professional researcher. Yes, yes, yes. But, um, but one of the things I do love to do, and I know like preserving seems like something your grandmother did, and it also seems like something that's super inaccessible, and why would we do it? But really, you really want to preserve your own lemons for two reasons. One, you cannot find them in South Africa. Um, there was a period of time where you were getting a few people doing it, and I'm going to show you, so funny, uh, Sam Linsell from Drizzle and Dip, I put out a call to everybody to say, who's got some lemons that are fully preserved? Because mine are still preserving. So she says, oh, I have this jar somewhere. You can see it's gone a bit brown. There's nothing wrong with it, but the, it's oxidized a bit. And it's, I think there's Tania Vita on the front. I never knew she made uh, food products. But I'm going to open the, the lid and I'm going to pass it around because it's a very specific type of scent. Um, and it's sort of partially pickled. I'm going to show you how to do it just now. But this is the most incredible ingredient to add to soups and stews. You can just have a sniff and pass it around. And then I'm going to show you, so it's uh, preserved lemons are mostly used in Moroccan and, and, and some Middle Eastern cuisine, but it's mostly actually Moroccan. These are actually from Morocco. Well, they're not. They're from England, but it's a company that actually bring these special lemons in from Morocco. So you definitely want more of a thin skinned lemon. Um, when you are uh, preserving them. So these lemon gold lemons are actually perfect. Um, a lot of the, the lemons uh, that you find in the store can, be, uh, can have a very thick pith. So when I say pith, I mean this, this area here. If there's too much pith, it can be a little bit bitter. So I think Tania Vita with those, if I was gonna use those, I would just actually use the flesh. I wouldn't use too much of the, of the skin to get the flavor. Okay, so I'm gonna pass these around as well because I really wanna show you the difference. Now these actually look like limes, don't they? But they're actually not. They're, uh, they are lemons. They're Beldi lemons and they're from Morocco. And I'm going to chop one up and just so you can just have a little try and a little taste. I love to add this into um, some salad dressings, also in um, uh, uh, stews, predominantly obviously vegetable stews. And it really just gives this like X factor flavor You've got to be careful not to add too much because it can, it can be a little bit bitter. But when I pass these around for you to try, I want you to have a look at how thin the skin is and how it melts in your mouth. I also love adding this. I don't know, um, it's, quite, it's not that easy to make, but you can make a, like a fake vegan tuna from dehydrated watermelon. I don't know if any of you tried to do that recipe yet. It's quite interesting. You, you actually marinate chunks of watermelon. Is that enough for everybody? Yeah? Yeah. See if it's enough. Um, and uh, you uh, then actually put it in a marinade as you would if you were making normal ceviche. And this is just beautiful and brilliant. But also, as I said, really so nice in, in salad dressings as well. So that's the flavor that you're looking for. It's quite unusual. It's quite interesting. Maybe some of you don't like it, you know? Well, try some, yeah? Um, uh, tequila. <laughs> yeah. So, so these lemons, I've started preserving these. I'm just going to talk you through how to do it. If you have any lemons, it's actually, it's really easy. It just takes time. Preserving just takes time. I definitely recommend that you get a jar that has a smaller neck and a, and a wider base. This is because your lemons are going to want to pop up and float and you really want to make sure that they're fully submerged and pushed down so that they stay there under the rim. Okay. Yeah, do you, is that a funny flavor for you? <laughs> Look at that face. You will like it when I put it in the food you eat. Yeah. So what, all you're going to do is you're going to cut the base off where there's uh, quite a lot of pith and then you're going to quarter it all the way down but not completely through to the bottom. So it's almost like a flower. You can still hold that nice lemon. 
And each lemon, you're literally going to pour fine salt in and literally stuff it. You can also use kosher salt, all those other really expensive salts, but you're going to use a lot of salt. So it's, it's literally three tablespoons in each lemon. And then you're just going to stuff it in a jar and you're going to just pour lemon juice, as much lemon juice as you have until it just covers the, the lemons. It will continue to also bleed its own juice into the liquid. And this liquid is like magic gold as well, adding it into, into soups and stews. You need to put that in a cold-ish. So I put it in a cupboard that I have uh, in the back of the house where it's cool. It doesn't need to be in the fridge. Maybe if you've got a hot kitchen in South African summer, you may need to keep it somewhere cooler. Um, cellar, if anyone has one. Um, and then you, you just want to, every other day for the first week, to just give it a bit of a shake. That's just to help all the salt, of course, uh, dissolve and amalgamate. And then basically, you're just going to leave it there in that cupboard for anywhere from four to six weeks. These have been going for four weeks now. They're not quite ready. But the lemons also have a thicker skin. Yeah. So the ones that you, uh, the ones that I showed you, the little Moroccan ones, they have a very thin skin. So they would probably um, marinate or preserve a lot quicker. And then yeah, and then you can just draw out what you need. Once I've opened the jar and start using it, I'll keep it in the in the fridge. But it's a real wonderful ingredient to have, and really, as I said, adds quite a bit of an unusual flavor. I specifically love putting it in winter stews, those kind of winter vegetable stews. Okay, so there we go. I think, does everybody have everything they need? <laughs> yeah, I think so. So, do you want to do the intro first? Even though, let's do that. Okay. So pretend she's not here, and <laughs> she's around the corner. So what happens oh, when you here. combine passion with being a naturopath? Persia, and a good blog. I don't know. I don't you, get, know. you don't know. Oh. No, I'm asleep. <laughs> I was like, you're not supposed to be here. You're, not, you're around the corner. You get Alia. Ladies and gentlemen, she's really passionate about food. For the last 10 years, yeah. she's been running um, cooking classes, cooking for people's homes, private chefing, and her blog is really, really incredible. One thing you'll notice about her is she's very knowledgeable, and she loves incorporating part of her heritage, which is Persian. So please, can you put your hands together for thanking yourself and oh Alia? Hi, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So I started without a proper introduction, but as I said, I just wanted to keep you all engaged and hopefully a little bit amused as well before we start. So a little bit about my personal journey. I'm actually a qualified naturopath and nutritional therapist. Um, I haven't actually practiced in clinic for the last decade. Um, I moved away from working in clinic and working much more with brands, health food brands. I worked with Nature's Choice for about six years. I was their national sort of like face, if you know what I mean. So I would go and educate the people at Discam about their products. I would write about their products and do product development for them. And then I moved away from that and I've really been working as a freelancer in that space. I have a foodie blog as well called Alia's Vibrant Life. And I tended to focus more on Persian and Middle Eastern food just because that's the food of my heritage. I'm, I'm half Persian. But my mother, who's Danish, actually fell in love with all things Middle Eastern. So um, although I have to say her Scandinavian bent ha has a big influence in the way I cook and the way I run my, my home. So it's, much more minimalistic in my approach um, when it comes to cooking. If, some, if I don't think something's necessary, we don't need it, you know, we don't use it. I'm extremely passionate about food that is vibrant, and I think that's why I decided to call my, my blog Alia's Vibrant Life, because I think the more we focus on abundance and inclusion and um, energy in food, the better. I really, especially when I did work with the clients and families in the past, it's better to turn away from thinking about what it is you can't eat and rather focus on what you can eat. And, and like this plant-powered show, I think what's so wonderful has become so accessible now for all of us. And there's this idea that you know, if you fill your diet with all the good stuff, then actually it doesn't really matter if you have a few of the things that maybe are not the best for you. So the whole idea of um, having vibrancy in food, also a lot of raw foods, although I don't actually believe, uh, you know, um, food needs to, all of it needs to be raw. I think some foods, especially from a nutritional point of view, benefit from being coaxed and cooked. Things like carrots, for example, their nutritional profile changes once you cook them. So the dishes I've chosen today for you, they're quite simple dishes, but again, I really wanted to make something I think you can take home that's really quick and easy to use. So we're gonna do two things. We're gonna start with the lemon sorbet. I'm actually just gonna show you how to make this because we don't actually have a, um, a uh, ice cream bowl for everybody, okay? So we're gonna talk that through and it's a rose and lemon sorbet. Now, of course, you might ask, you know, is a sorbet really healthy? 
okay, well, that's a very, very good question because it's full of sugar. Um, it's obviously plant-based. It's just lemons. But obviously, if you're eating sorbet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, no, it's not going to be healthy. But I also don't believe in demonizing any foods. I think they can all form part of a very uh, healthy lifestyle. And I think the minute you start saying you can't have something, then you start to, to focus on it. Okay, so I'm going to get my uh, bowl out. I've had to keep it in this bag here so it stays cold. So this is something new that uh, KitchenAid... Well, actually, I think they have an older version, but... It's really pretty clever. So it's just a bowl that stays in your freezer. So you've got to have freezer space. That's the only thing. Um, but it's, it stays cold. There's a gel inside the actual casing. And if you have a stand mixer at home, then all you need to do is fix it in. OK. And then there's this very cool little attachment. I'm going to actually show you how to do it. It's just like that. Just make sure it goes in the right direction. There we go. And then this is the, the paddle attachment. I'm actually just going to put it in there just for now. Let's move that out of the way so that I don't trip and go flying. Okay, so what is a sorbet? A sorbet is, help me anybody, what, what do you think a sorbet is versus a ice cream? What's the difference between the, the two? Yeah, it's basically, a sugar, but also there's no, there's no dairy-based sort of things in it. Okay, um, and with this one, with the lemon sorbet, we've got, we're just going to make a simple syrup. A simple syrup is basically 50% water, 50% sugar. You can use a non-bleached sugar if you want. I've made it many times at home, but it becomes a golden color. You don't get that beautiful lemony color. In fact, Johannes, we can bring the sorbet out as well and people can try. I've added some rose water into this sorbet just to make it a little bit more Middle Eastern and give it a little bit more of a different sort of edge. You can pass that around. You have to be very careful with rose water because you really don't want, if you use too much, it can taste a bit, bit like sort of, you know, your grandmother's cupboard. Do you know what I mean? That sort of smell that, it, there's like a fine line between it actually smelling floral and beautiful and a little bit cloying and a little bit heavy. So you do have to be quite careful. So simple syrup is 50% sugar, 50% water. So two cups sugar, two cups water. And then you're going to stir it gently until it actually um, dissolves. And then you want about five minutes just to reduce it so that it becomes, um, uh, it's, it's all becomes one, one syrup, but you don't want it to be too thick. If you reduce it too much, then your sorbet is not going to freeze properly. We've also got fresh lemon juice. And as I said, we've got our beautiful rose water. And I have pre-made some sorbet. This is brilliant. It takes about 20 minutes, guys, to actually make your own sorbet. So let's have a look and see how it works because we can just have this running in the background. I'm actually thinking as well, before we start, maybe we can start boiling your pasta. Or I think they may have also made some pasta for you just so that we can get going. Um, I think, let me just see, let's just do one as well. I'll fill them up with water for you. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, I think, I do think actually they've also ready made the pasta, I think because we were all running behind. So I think we can probably just do the, um, the, the sauce. I'll see when Johannes comes back and we can ask him. Thank you. And also, I think we just need to find out, Hannes, will you just find out if the pasta is also actually ready made? Because I think they said they were going to do that because we were running a bit late. And then we need some teaspoons. Have you guys got teaspoons there? We will find some just now. I'll keep that nice and cold in my bag. Okay. Let's see, are we all going to turn on? Ah, turn it on. That's always a good thing. Okay, let's have a look. Let's make sure everything is all good. There we go. Now, obviously, when you're making a, a, a sorbet, normally when you're mixing things, you would have this probably going at quite a high speed. Ah, I see what's happened. We've got a little bit of ice here at the bottom. That's why. Nice. Obviously, it has to sit flush. So let's just warm that up a little bit. But it's a very clever device. Um, I, I had one, I think, by, um, I think it was Philips, you know, one of those electric ones. I don't know if you've seen them, those standalone ice cream makers. But I actually ended up, you know, not using it because the motor wasn't strong enough 
to start churning the ice cream when it got quite icy. So I just want to dissolve that a little bit at the bottom so it can stand flush. Okay, here we go. And all we're going to do is mix our simple syrup in with the lemon juice. Now, if you don't have one of these, you don't need one to make sorbet. What I would recommend you do, well, you can do two things. If you, if, you do, if you don't mind a bit of alcohol, you can add a little bit of limoncello or even vodka works, like about 50 mils, and that will stop it from freezing completely and the ice crystals forming. And then all you would want to do is every 30 minutes, once you put it in a Tupperware, is uh, give it a good stir. Okay, but this is going to do that for us. Okay, I just want to... Okay, there we go. Let's mix these two things together. They're bringing teaspoons as well. Okay, because nobody can try anything if they don't bring so the teaspoons. They were saying the induction stoves that they have are stronger than the stove they have there. So if I, we take all the pots and start boiling their own spaghetti, is it possible? No, have they made pasta? Okay, all right. We can try. Okay. Yeah, I think, can they not, do you not just want to take the pasta and then boil it there? They say this is strong. These are stronger, okay. But we need water. Yeah, from here. Yeah, but I don't know that there's enough water there. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, let's just get going with this, and then you can all try some sorbet. We also need some teaspoons, love. I don't know if you can ask them to bring some teaspoons so that everybody can try. Okay, so what I was saying was when you normally mix something um, uh, at home, when you're using a stand mixer like this, you would probably have it on quite a high speed. You want the opposite here because you obviously want things to freeze. So... We're only going to keep it on one. Go. Let's do this as well. Just add a little bit more. I don't want to spill it. And if we can find the rose water somewhere so that I can just add a little bit. I don't know where it's. Ah, thank you so much. Lovely. Hi, we need to bring all those pots of water to the boil, guys. Thank you. And then once the water's boiling, the sauce we're just going to make in the blender. So don't worry about that. It's going to happen very, very quickly. Okay, so here we've got the lemon sorbet, which is already made. Are you adding olive oil into the water? So it's interesting, the jury is out on that when it comes to boiling pasta. How many of you add oil to your water when you're boiling pasta? No, no, you know what? Actually, it's an interesting, it's an interesting question. But what does the oil do when you put it in the water? Yeah, so, you know, for me, the jury's out. So you get some people who say, oh, an Italian mama told me to do it, and that's why I always do it. Um, but there's a large group of people that say, no, it's a complete waste of your oil. Because if you look at the pasta water, the oil just pulls on the top and then you drain it. So you could argue, well, what's the point of using the olive oil in the water? The key thing, if you want to, um, yeah, we need little spoons for everybody to try. The key thing about pasta to stop it from, like if you've boiled pasta and then you, um, you want to make a salad with it, or maybe you're making a bit earlier in the day, is to wash it. So once you've cooked it, your penne, I mean, obviously not going to work with spaghetti. You want to wash the, um, uh, the, the pasta a little quickly with cold running water, and it just pulls the, the, the starch off. We don't need those. Yeah, 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 we don't need those, guys. Thank you. We just need some spoons, and we just need water, pots of boiling water, very, very quickly. Okay. And salt. We're going to need to put salt in the water. Let's see. I think there should be... You guys can do that for me. Is there salt in no, it will, these, are, these are brilliant. The Snappy Chef is brilliant. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this, this next dish while the sorbet is going and while we're waiting for some spoons. Incidentally, this sorbet is also fantastic as a palate cleanser. I know that sounds super fancy. Um, maybe, you know, you're not in the habit of having four or five course, uh, um, you know, um, uh, what's it called, courses at a, at a dinner party. But I find if you've got quite different flavors in each course, it's really nice to put like a bit of a palate cleanser, just a little bit in between the course. 
You don't also have to add rose water into this. You could put basil leaves in when you're making the syrup, pull them out. A lemon and basil sorbet is also delicious and works quite well with that whole sort of savory element. Yes, there should be a, there, I, there should be re a recipe card or it will be on the plant. I, I couldn't find the recipe card here, but I think it will be on the, um, on the plant powered website. This was the dish we were going to do together and the sorbet was going to be more of a, of a demo. Okay. So yeah, if you don't have one of these stand mixers, guys, and you don't have the sorbet bowl, then as I said, you can just pour it into um, a Tupperware. And actually I learned a really cool trick as well recently. If you are, have ice cream tubs and things, and you know how sometimes they can get really, really hard. If you actually put them in another plastic bag, like a Ziploc bag, and then put that in your freezer, it stays scoopable. Don't ask me how that works. Something to do with the air trapping around it. There's obviously science there but I'm not entirely sure what it is. Okay, so this dish, why did I choose uh, this dish? Mm. No, 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 we just need to make sure everybody can cook the pasta. Because, yeah, yeah. Is it all boiling, guys? Is your, how are we doing? We almost there? Okay, so if you can keep an eye on your boiling water, then when it starts to boil, put your pasta in and then time it. I think this is spaghettini, so it's probably gonna take about, ooh, throwing it over. It's probably gonna take about nine minutes. Thank you, love. Okay. Have we got little teaspoons for people to try? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Will you take it around? It's, it's melting a little bit, but we're still good. Maybe you want to pass it around. I'm not going to put it all into individual ramekins, guys. I think it's going to just take too long. So let me pass it around for you to try. And you can see how it's become opaque as well. By opaque, I mean it's not translucent. If you looked at the syrup, it was completely translucent. So it goes this, and you can see why you want the white sugar in this instance. So simple syrup, lemon juice, and then you can add, yes, you make a simple syrup, add the rose water at the end, add the lemon juice at the end, because if you add it at the beginning, you're gonna cook the rose water out. But so delicious. Yes, so you do your simple syrup first, you add your lemon juice, and then like a bit, it's delicious, yeah. And you can see how it might work in between courses, just to have a little bit of something fresh, just to clean your mouth, and just get, and so simple guys, anybody can do that, okay? Have you all had a try? I think yeah, that, that I the end. Take the spoons, rinse them, and then I'll go. Okay. It's really, it's, uh, look, we're all doing it, you know, we're all here, we're all doing it. Okay, we're all managing. So the reason I chose this next um, dish that we're doing with the avocados is for two reasons. Okay, so yes, Avolanda also sponsor, uh, one of our sponsors, so I was encouraged, like I said, to use, um, to use avocados where I could. And the reason why I really like this particular uh, dish is because it is probably one of the most simple, there we go, the most simple pasta dishes you can make. Um, and if you think about avocados, they're nutritious, creamy, but we don't often put them in, in warm dishes. I don't know, if, does anybody have a warm dish that they would use avo in? Not really, we, we might use it as a salsa on top of another warm dish, but we generally don't use it as a warm ingredient. Um, but why not? Why don't we? If you think about it, it is plant-based, it's creamy, it has a great mouth feel. Why wouldn't we necessarily use it as like a creamy pasta sauce? So that is basically what we're going to try and do here. Yeah. Why don't we cook pasta with the lid on? Because it will just froth up. It creates the starch and everything creates pressure and then the, the, it'll just froth and bubble over. It will actually even do that if you don't have the lid on and it's too much water. Yeah. Yeah, they'll bring some utensils now. Yeah. So, has everybody tried the sorbet? Okay, at the back. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, we're just, we, 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 we just recirculating the spoons. I think about nine, let's see, it's spaghettini. I know that spaghetti is supposed to be served al dente. I must be honest, I don't know if it's my Middle Eastern roots, but I actually like it sort of cooked. Um, that's my personal preference. I just think it absorbs sauce so much nicer. When pasta's cooked, you know, like the, they, they say pasta should be al dente. I, I actually prefer it cooked. I don't like too much. Yeah, but you know, I also think this thing of should and, you know, my, my issue with food, I remember when I competed in MasterChef in the UK, I'll give you an example, in 2010, yes, it was a while ago. Um, but, and I got through to the quarterfinals, so okay, I didn't win, um, but I did get through to the quarterfinals, and one of the things that really struck me in the show was um, 
the way that the judges would talk about, oh, but you put that with that, and you know, oh, that's quite brave putting that with that, and you just think, but that's just silly, really. If something tastes good to you, why shouldn't you enjoy it? If you prefer that, the, the mouthfeel for that, why should it be one particular way? Okay, so back to the, this avocado sauce. I think the reason why I picked it is because, um, you know, as I said, it's an unusual way to use avocados. I have two teenage boys who are like permanently hungry and I'm always looking for nutritious things for them to eat quickly. It's a really great holiday pasta dish. You don't have to do it with spaghetti. In fact, if I'm doing it more as like a extra plate for the table in terms of like a, uh, you know, a get together, I'll probably use penne or something like that just because it's easier to mix the sauce in. But this way, it really does feel like a creamy sort of bowl of pasta you can twirl your, your fork around. So all we're actually going to do, if you have a look at your recipe card, we are going to blend all these ingredients in the blender. Now, the grated courgette and the tomatoes, please leave those to one side. Do not put those in your blender. We also do need some little chopping boards because I'd like everybody to chop those cherry tomatoes. And we did have some sharp knives somewhere. Maybe we can get... Okay, cool. We just need some little chopping boards for you. So your grated courgette and your tomato, you're going to add at the end. Okay, there we go. I'll move these also to one side. We can give everybody some more sorbet as well at the, at the end. I just wanted you to try it. Oh, yeah, here. Here, Elana. Let's use this for now. There we go. He's we actually need some uh, pasta spoons. <laughs> That's what you call improvisation. Yeah. Here, I'm wondering if I can also hand. Does anybody else need another spoon? Let me just give them a quick rinse. What is there's an Afrikaans saying about a boer making a plan? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, do we need one to just use these here? Yeah. So basically all we're going to do with this, um, are you boiling your pasta? No, it's taking too long. Uh, it's because it's a La Crusade pot. No, they yeah, just changed. Yeah, we're going. Okay, all right. We all good? Yeah? Okay, so we're actually all we're going to do, so uh, how many of you have made guacamole before? Okay, so we're not going to make guacamole, but basically the principles here are the same. We're going to blend the avocado with some basil. I'm also going to give you some lemon zest and some garlic and some lemon juice. Uh, yeah, we're actually just going to hoi it all in the blender, but make sure, whoa, 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 stop. Have a look at your recipe card for the amounts, okay? Because I just want to make sure that they've given... <laughs> yeah, there we go. Just pass those around so people can chop. Is everybody managing okay? Okay. So I'm going to come around with some lemon zest I've got here. Okay. And I'm going to put a little bit in your, in your blender. Okay. Yes. Add all the basil. Okay. That's oh, all right, my darling. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Uh, some lemon juice so you need yeah. to squeeze all of that that there we go there's the lemon juice for you oh, okay. and then add now depending on how garlicky you like your pasta you can add two or one cloves I would add two but then I love garlic it's not a problem for me I'm also gonna add a little bit of the lemon zest here it's also a really nice way to get a little injection of raw veg into a dish so you know a uh, courgette cooks so quickly so the, it's really, really nice. If you just add grated courgette into a dish like this, then it will literally just cook as you're folding it into the pasta. I'm gonna come give you some of this. I don't wanna give you too much. So make it better. Oops. Here, my darling. Okay. You definitely need to add a good glug of olive oil. You got a good glug, Em? You did it. Good stuff. Yeah, you can always, we can always add a bit more as we go along as well and see. Have you guys got a blender? Here we go. Can I give you some of this? There we go. I don't know how many of you also use uh, lemon zest a lot in your cooking. Um, it's a really, really fabulous way to add freshness. Just make sure when you're obviously zesting that you don't use the pith. 
which is the white layer around the actual lemon flesh. It'll make it very bitter. Yeah, keep going. We're going to need to add some salt into that sauce as well, guys. You're this. There we go. Do you need those top? Uh, yeah, yeah. We, well, actually, I think everybody's going to do, everybody's doing their, their own. I'm going to help them do it, so it's all good. How are we doing? Good? We're going to have to come over and, and drain the pasta individually, but I'll help you with that, so no worries. There we go. Thanks, Hannes. So nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take this over here. We're also going to need bowls for everybody to put their food in, I think. Yeah, like a nice bowl so that they can mix everything in. No, no, no. I think everybody needs to be able to mix it in. Yeah, so that's it. You can keep adding a bit of olive oil to loosen it up. And also, once it's blended, you can have a taste. You may want to add a little bit more lemon juice. Add a little bit more lemon juice. Or olive oil. Have you added olive oil? You need olive oil. You've already put a lot in. Here we go. Let's have a look. Is this one open? Have you already added olive oil? Okay. Does anybody else need any more olive oil? We've all got. Okay. Be very careful. I'm going to yeah, make sure push those avos down a little bit. Have you got a spoon to push them down? You don't want to spin extra virgin olive oil on its own in a blender too much. It'll make it bitter. If you've ever done that with pesto, I've done that many times. It's a disaster. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Go drain. That's it. And he's gonna, we're going to bring a bowl for you just now. Here we go. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. She's going to add a little bit of the pasta water in there just so that it, it smooths it out. Do that if you need to. Guys, you can also just add filtered water. There we go. Just a little bit. Yeah, just that's enough. Yep. Sorry, my darling. Well, it, it's not a must. It's just if you're struggling to blend it, once you've added all your liquid, you can just add a little bit of that water. That will help. Just do that. Mm, actually, it's quite stuff. Maybe stop it and get your spoon and then just give it a little bit of a, a tap. Have a taste of the sauce, guys. Does it need more salt? Does it need more lemon? Does it need more basil? And if you want, you can add, as I said, a little bit of... The, have you added your lemon juice? Let's add your lemon juice. You're definitely going to need that. You might even need a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, that's fine. It, it's nice when it's lemony. Don't, don't be scared of the lemon. You can even open... If you need more salt, you can open the top and shove it in. You're good? Good, good. Taste it first. Make sure it's smooth and give it a taste first and see if does it need more salt, does it need more lemon. Does anybody else need help draining their pasta? Yeah. Maybe pass those around if anybody needs them. Ten, ten minutes max. Have we had a taste? Spoons. Um, oh, sorry. Um, we need forks and we need spoons. We need, uh, yeah, I think we need uh, 20. Forks and spoons, cutlery. Okay, there we go, guys. We're getting there. Yeah, oh, hang on, Just hang on a second. Lift it up. Oh, these, these are stiff, but they're stiff for a reason, so everything doesn't go flying. Yeah, I tell you what we're going to do as well. Let me just try this. Mm. You're going to need more salt. Yeah. And add a bit. Yeah. It's interesting. I can also taste. Yeah, definitely need more salt. Is it bitter? I think, yeah, I 
Oh, okay, so it's made it bitter. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's the ba the maybe a bit too much basil. Well, we we, we won't use because it's a, there's only plant-based things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Add, add you added more salt. Add this in too. It's from the olive oil, huh? Shame. Let me try. Oh, it's terribly bitter. That must be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think the basil must not be right. Does anybody else? Is anybody else is really bitter? Pardon? Yeah, but if you put it in at the top, it should be okay. Yeah, no. What I meant is that it normally does not come out like this at all. Is it bitter? Yeah. Can I try? I'll just use the end here. I'll put a bit of salt in there now, so just that one is stuck, so just like Yeah, yeah. ooh, there we go. Just mix it around. Did it put too much? Mmm, it's not too... I think if we add a bit more lemon juice and some salt, we might save that. Let me see if I can get some. Let's have a look. Does anybody need to drain their pasta? Yeah, you're all doing that, okay. I think, does anybody want some more lemon juice? I think they may have put a bit too many basil leaves out for you guys. And I think that's made it bitter. Yeah, let's try this. Have you put some in? Does anybody need some more lemon juice? Can I try? It's too bitter. Yeah. Let's have a look. And you need salt. So Ooh. It's very bitter. Yeah, I think there was too many. Uh yeah, but let's see if we can put some lemon juice in. Actually, the one at the, the top here is not bad. Yeah. Let's try that and also add a good chunk of salt. Definitely need some salt. Okay, guys, so it's unfortunate, but it seems like the basil has made it bitter. Yeah? But this is actually, is yours, how's yours tasting? Let me try. It's going to look very pretty. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's interesting that it's gone like that. Mm. But this is not bad. Yours is not bad at all. No, I would definitely add more salt. And if you fold in a bit of your uh, your veg, yours is actually is is okay. Yeah. How's yours tasting now? Still bitter. Yeah. Let's have a look. See. Yeah. Yes. And how many? Yeah. And what did it? Yeah. Okay, I think, I think what's happened is there's been too much basil that was put out. So guys, we're going to just try and save the day as we go along, okay? We we're here, what can we do, okay? Let's add, you don't need, obviously want to add all the sauce, but you want to add, for those of you, guys, one of the sauces up here is actually okay. Can we maybe share it? Can I share yours? Yeah. Guys, if you want, this is actually, if we can squirrel some out, this is really not bad. Have a try. You're just going to need to add a little bit of salt. Maybe you can mix it in. Yeah, maybe they got less basil. I don't know. I don't know. But have a look, see if you can mix it in. Have you guys got a bowl? I think they might need a bowl to mix with. Yeah, let's give you guys some bowls, yeah? Does anybody want a bowl to mix it in? Yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah, you want to pull? Yeah. Okay. Guys, I know some of you have to leave because you had places to be and we're running behind. Okay, I'll see you soon. No, you're not leaving until I've taken a picture. <laughs> at Master Chef. Wait, I want to. Bye, my darling. Take care. Bowl for anybody else? Um, yeah, does anybody else need a bowl? Oh, they wanted a bowl. Do they have a bowl? Do you want a bowl too? I'm going to bring you some, we're going to save the day. Take care. We're, we're going to save the day. Don't worry. <laughs> Maybe not for that, that one. No, well, actually, what I wanted to do was, <laughs> listen, at least you both look really pretty. It's, you know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to put a little bit of this in a bowl for you to try. And actually, Hannes, if we can bring back out the sorbet so that we can, everybody can, yeah, let's put some of this in there. Pop it here. 
So you can see how the courgette, if you've mixed it in, the courgette actually partially cooks because it's grated, but you've still got that, that good sort of raw bite. Let's just do this. And I think everybody can just, it's going to be easier, I think, that way. If everybody wants to take a little bit of a, a scoop. There we go. And we need some forks and spoons. Did everybody get forks and spoons? We've got them. Okay. So guys, be careful with your basil at home, but I think it does say half a cup in the... I've tasted the olive oil now, it's quite better. Yeah. So it might be the olive oil as well. Yes. Yes, darling. You must actually that bowl there is beautiful. Okay. No, everything is right here. And it's a very bitter olive oil. The olive oil is very bitter, guys. Try some. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very, very bitter olive oil. So, yeah, this would be fine to use. Yeah. You can actually even smell the bitterness. I'm just going to have a look. Mmm. Yeah, it's actually, guys, the olive oil is very, very bitter. Yeah, it's a super, it's the wrong one to use for this. Can you taste it? Yeah, but it's definitely, I mean, you can even pick it off. It's really, it's really bitter. Mm. Yeah, so there we go, guys. In this dish, then you want to use a really li a light, a light olive oil to loosen the, the, the sauce. Yeah, it's extremely, it's extremely bitter. Did you get some to try? Oh, it looks so pretty. Look at that. But yeah, without the sauce. Um, but you know, you get the idea. You can use the avos. You could actually add some also spices. You could make it also, um, you know, I often, you know, what are those lovely, um, those fake bacon bits and stuff like that. You can do like a carbonara. But the point I just was trying to illustrate is you can use avos to make a creamy sauce that perhaps you, you wouldn't think to use. It doesn't need to be served cold. It can be served. It can be served warm. You're just going to enjoy that. Do you want some salt? Just don't put any olive oil on it. Whatever you do. Have you tried it? Yes, yes. Hell of a bitter. I know. I know. I know. What do we do? There we go. Is that one okay? This one is good. Yes, you see. Yeah. Yeah, shame. Have a try of this one over here. Yeah, have a try of that one over here. But you can see how it makes a really delicious creamy sauce, you know, if you want to. And I mean, an avocado, we have so many avocados here. I know. It's like faulty towers, but for cooking instead. <laughs> Take care. Yeah, thank you guys. I know some of you have to go and collect kids. Come and have a taste. And then I think, why don't we get some of that lemon sorbet out as well and then everybody can have a little mouthful. I, th I think maybe we need a palate cleanser. Yeah. And use this plastic spoon as your spoon. Okay, okay. Oh, no, they, I think they're just going to bring the sorbet out. Everybody can just have a try. But I definitely want a, a mouthful to take that taste away. It's very, very, very strong. Looks pretty though. You could also put some steamed broccoli or, um, and also for a bit of crunch, some toasted pumpkin seeds or something like that. Yeah. Be interested to try. Did, was yours also, did it come out okay? Was it better? Let's see. Oh, you guys did well. There is that bit of thing, but I think maybe when you mix it with there, no, have the pasta, have more of the pasta than the sauce. You need a fork. Hold on. Mm, yeah, if we can have a fork. There we go. Take the, take the taste away. Here we go. There we go. And I'll leave you a spoon if you want more sorbet. Thank you. Do you have a bowl? Yeah, take some, please, guys. I made it for you. If you'd like to have a little bit more, you're very welcome. <laughs> So I hope you will try this at home, but no, without extra virgin olive oil. It's, 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 there we go. Yeah. And I think, yeah, amazing. And not even that much. Yeah, 
Very strong. Yeah, it's actually a perfect example how if you want something for a dressing, then you've got to be really careful yeah. about the oil. So you've got the nutritional benefit of that, but it's very, very bitter and strong. Yeah. Nice. Hey? That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we should actually have had cones. Then everybody could have had a dollop in a cone. Yeah, yeah, please go. You can see how it's actually... If anybody wants to come up and have a look at the, the sorbet bowl. So it takes about 20 minutes from start to finish. You can see how it's already going opaque. And actually, I've often done the same thing, but then added like two cups of pureed uh, strawberries. Okay. So blend the strawberries in with your lemon juice. Um, and then you can add that in there. And then you have a strawberry sorbet. The, 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 the lemon you put after. Yes. You don't want to boil the simple syrup with the lemons. But I, I'll, I'll, I think the recipe is on the website. But also make sure that you, you get it. But you can add other fruits. Berries especially are great. Thin-skinned fruits. They're also really good. Yeah. And strawberry goes well with lemon. Why does it make it into a sorbet? A sorbet is just a, a, a fruity thing. So Because it's cold. It's freezing. And, and the thing is... Yeah, this stays in your freezer. Or you put it in the night before, but I just keep it in the freezer, then it's always there. And then as long as it keeps moving and churning, it stops the ice crystals from forming. Yeah? Science. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's such a simple... It's not even a recipe, really, is it? It really is, but... Um, and I would definitely use penne or those, that type of pasta if you were, maybe it's easier. But I, I do like to eat it like this because it feels like it's almost like a faux carbonara. Um, a bit of smokiness maybe, adding something like that. And we're happy we don't have to clean all of this up. The fairies come and do it. How did we do in the end? Yeah, did you try, did you try the olive oil on its own? It's, yeah, have a look. Oh, you did already. I mean, it's super grassy. Mm. You know what I mean by grassy? Very green. Yeah, quite something. But yeah, the aftertaste is not good, but you get the, the vibe. And think about all the other things you can add in there, like toasted pumpkin seeds and things to have crunch. I, but this is the point, my teenage boys can rack this up in. Well, the actual sauce is so grainy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye, thank you, take care, enjoy, see you tomorrow. Okay, my love, go, go. Hmm. Huh? Okay, let's see. Ah, here's the sorbet. Yeah. Ugh. You think so? Hmm. I've got some mahalo beer as well. Does anybody want any more of this? You're good. It's quite sweet as well. But nice, the lemon cuts through. Well, thank you very much for coming. Hopefully tomorrow things will be running a little bit smoother. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's almost like I feel like it was like a reality TV show of like how to get through something when it's yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, oh, I see. Yeah, it, that would that would be just like me to do that as well. By the way, yeah, just like me. Okay, thank you, darling. Take care, guys. <laughs> yes, it's, it's very true. Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's see. I'll go in the back and whip everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Do you want any more? Or just, um, yeah, have, have a little bit here. Have you got your spoon? And actually, basil would work in this as well. Like I said, if you just steep the... Um, God, I thought you were going to say in the sorbet for a minute then. I was about to say, you. Yes, you could, and sun dried yeah. tomatoes. But I, I normally also put like some a, a pumpkin, something crunchy. You want a bit of crunch, so some pumpkin yeah. seeds. Just yeah, minutes. pumpkin seeds actually goes quite nice. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Did you have some? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Go well. Enjoy.